All right, reviewing your customs, episode 19. You know the deal, four talented artists. Let's dive right in. All right, first up, we've got a pair from The Kick Fix. This box is super heavy, so I can't wait to see what's inside. All right, that logo there tells you what our theme is gonna be. Okay, Princess Peach will be mine. That's a nice touch. Hi Dylan, thanks so much for reviewing my custom Bowser Air Forces. My name is Gio and I started customizing shoes in college to make side money after being inspired by Sophie Soap's thrifting videos. After seeing I could make money from painting thrifted shoes, I went to your channel to learn tricks on customizing sneakers in the most effective ways. Now I own my own resale custom sneaker store called Sneaker Kings of Maryland. Wow, congratulations. So it is cool to finally be able to send a pair of my shoes out to you. The specific custom is my most experimental one yet because these Air Forces originally had a huge gash through the leather. Because they were so beat up, I decided to try out the weird spike trend I've been seeing for years, but with my own spin. So this was my first attempt with coffee dyeing a sneaker and adding the spikes to the toe box, which made this my most time consuming project yet. I hope you enjoy reviewing these customs. Thanks again, Gio from The Kick Fix. All right, I can't wait to see these. Okay, okay, we've got a really, really unique spin on the Bowser theme on these Air Forces. Let's move this big old box to the side. All right, so as you mentioned, these are coffee dyed. You could really notice it on the midsole, outsoles, and sock liner. It looks very even everywhere, so great job on the dye application. But we gotta start with these toe boxes. Right away, I thought my mind was kind of playing a trick on me. I couldn't tell if you added an additional material onto the toe box or something, but you did some really neat paint tricks with this white outline around the entire toe box, and then you painted in the pattern that would be on Bowser's shell, and that looks really cool. And then all of the little holes where the spikes go in are outlined in red. So like I said, my mind was just sort of playing tricks on me. It almost looked like an illusion of what was happening, but you know, some really nice details there for how you decided to do that. Like you mentioned, it's it's pretty experimental and, and something that you don't see every day. So I really dig how that turned out. Then for the rest of the upper, we've got this yellow Bowser skin color along with this green near the back heels. Red on the swoosh and the back tab and the Bowser face logo can be seen on the back tabs and on the tongue tags of these. I quite enjoy this concept of airbrushing in the reptile skin pattern that you did near the backs of the shoes, and I'm quite tempted to say I would have liked to seen even more of that throughout the rest of the upper, but I think you went about it a very interesting way, how you took a darker shade of the green and airbrushed it not only on the green, but also on the yellow, almost like a transition where the two colors meet. I think most people probably would have only airbrushed that darker green on the green panels, but like I said, you went about it a very interesting way. So I think this could have been another nice opportunity to do another separate pattern on the rest of the yellow, maybe in like a darker yellow, but you could have also let some of that yellow pattern bleed onto the green panels the way you have some of the green pattern bleeding onto the yellow panels. Few little spots here and there where there's some paint on the midsole, little bit of paint on the sock liners, and unfortunately some paint rubbing off on that stripe on the midsole. Same with on that air branding. You always run a risk when you paint your midsole. Paint just doesn't want to bond there long term. But overall, this is a really cool take on the Bowser theme. I think if you removed some of your cool add-on features, like the spikes on the toe box, the reptile skin pattern that you airbrushed in, then it would have been a very basic and safe Bowser colorway. But because you decided to add those things, that's how you can start to incorporate your signature touch onto pieces like this. So overall, great job by you, man. All right, next up, we've got a pair from Donkey Punch. All right, we've got some Macho Man stickers here, so we are off to a great start. Ooh-wee, check out the case for these. How shall thou open this box? Okay. Ooh-wee, check out these desert camo forces. Man, these are clean. Yowza. Whoo. Ooh. Look at this. Look at this. 
desert camo on the Nike Air stitching. That is clean. Along with the red, white, and blue stripe right below that. Come on now. All right, I think these might be coffee dyed. They're slightly, slightly aged on the midsoles and sock liner. It's not that factory white anymore, but it works perfectly with this desert camo theme. And I truthfully, this is some of the cleanest desert camo you will ever see. 10 out of 10, A++. I mean, everywhere you look, every single curve of this camo is pristine. Wow. We also have what I believe is entirely new tongues installed on these. Maybe they're not, and maybe you somehow found some of that same desert camo material, adhered that directly to the leather tongue, but it's not painted like the rest of the upper. And then swapped out the Nike Air tongue tag for an American flag. Great touch there. Then you went ahead and removed the Nike swooshes and replaced them with what I believe is a laser cut leather in the form of a rifle. And directly behind that, on the quarter panels, you can see there's some mesh added. But something else that I want to point out is just how great of a job it was by you to go back and really clean up all those stitch holes left behind from the Nike swoosh, patched right over them, and now you can't even tell that they were there. Every single edge on this shoe is the exact color it's supposed to be. Every single piece of camo is completely solid in color. Even if we take a look at the edging around the toe box, it always matches the camo of the surrounding panels. I mean, in terms of attention to detail, precision, overall cleanliness, this is some of the best work I've ever seen. But my favorite part of these is still that Nike Air branding on the back done in the desert camo on the stitching. Not easy to do. Overall, truly an amazing job. Great job by you, man. All right, next up, we've got a pair from Creative Sneaks. Very well bubble wrapped. So for the overall design, we've got a really cool family guy and Star Wars crossover. On the outside of the right shoes, we have Stewie as Darth Vader, along with the big family guy logo beside him. And then on the outside of the left shoes, we have Peter as Han Solo, Chris as Luke, and Lois as Princess Leia. Now I think that all of your character work turned out great on these. If you take a look at those black outlines everywhere, super clean, super consistent. I love the subtle glow that you added directly behind them. There's this pale blue that really helps them stand out from that black galaxy background. There's a really cool red glow added directly behind the lightsabers. So you clearly know what you're doing with an airbrush to add a subtle effect like that. In terms of composition, when you're doing characters like this, it's incredibly important that their key features, being their eyes, mouth, and nose, are never placed where two panels overlap. The reason for that is because it can really start to distort the image itself. So there's only a very tiny portion of Chris's left eye that's placed on the two panels, but if you just scooted him over about a quarter inch when you were planning out the design, you could have completely avoided that. In terms of the overall design, I think it's a pretty cool idea to still keep 70% of the shoe as an all-white Air Force One and just have your artwork running along the exteriors, but I do think it presents a challenge where your artwork meets that white Air Force One, and I do think you can come up with something better than this, where maybe you start the red a little bit further back and try to subtly blend it into the white, or use some type of pattern or stencil that will really help transition you from red into the white. But as it currently stands, I think it's just a little bit too abrupt, too harsh of a transition. You definitely want to make sure to pull out and remove any of the stitching that gets left behind when you remove one of those Nike swooshes, and then just other little details like touching up this edge. This should be white since the rest of that back tab panel is still that factory white. But overall, this is a really cool take on this type of theme, and there's some great techniques applied here as well, from the airbrushing, to the character work, to even the tiny little splatter that you did to create the night sky. So definitely keep going, man. Great job. All right, and last up, all the way from France, we have KYX Customs. All 
right, we've got batteries, so I think we've got something pretty cool in store here. Wow. Shoo-wee. Oh, man. Thanks, bro. This is an honor, Aisa. Oh, boy. I can't wait to put these batteries in. All right, we gotta start off with this. Take a look at Ryu's eye. How <laughs> when you plug in the battery, his evil eye just turns on. That is really, really dope. Take a look at the other one here. What does this one do? Oh, yeah. Same thing. Eyes that glow. And, I mean, it looks really, really clean. Just when you look at the shoe and you don't know that it does something extravagant like that, you wouldn't particularly be able to tell, especially from afar. It sort of just looks like the eyes right there. This is one of those pairs of shoes, to be honest, where quite frankly, I'm not even sure where to really begin. I guess just talking about the overall theme, it's a Street Fighter theme. One of the shoes dedicated to Akuma, the other shoe dedicated to Ryu. And just the overall vibe of these is so on point. I love this dyed outsole, dyed midsole that just flows with the rest of the upper. It just has this amazing, grungy, dark feel that's perfect for these types of characters. There's some masterful airbrushing, the way you have these dark vignettes all around the upper, this black splatter throughout. This is just, this is, this is top-notch work. I, I love the little controllers added onto the midsoles. That's such a, such a nice touch. And then you went ahead and, I mean, there's just more nice touches throughout. Right here, right below, it's not attached to the laces, but we have what looks like the PlayStation console on one and an Xbox on the other. Custom tongue tags where you have almost the little, uh, the things that hang outside of the pins for Crocs and more stuff with controllers. I mean, this is, this is wow. Wow. I mean, look at what you did with the back tab. This is where the back tab's supposed to go on these Air Force highs. And I have no idea what type of deconstructing and re reconstructing you did, but it's meant to essentially symbolize his, his tied headband. And um, I, I just can't even tell what parts were removed or, pieced back together on these but that is such a cool little touch on the other one it's completely removed but you found a way to incorporate that into the theme of the ca i mean just that's that's good stuff right there i absolutely love the idea where you have these huge characters that take up such a large portion of the upper where just directly behind them you have some really bright colors that just subtly pop and really stand out. So right behind Akuma here, we have a little bit of neon green. And like I said, because the characters are so big, you're really not seeing a lot of it, but it's just a little hit of color. And then over on the Ryu shoe, you went with this sort of orangey sunset yellow. And I think that was such a smart choice to just get a little bit more color added into these. Taking a closer look at some of your character work, I think just about everything on these was done to perfection. From the line work, to the shading, to the color selection, to these subtle little glows that you have. If you take a look at Ryu's right eye right here, that eye just really pops. If you take a look near the left portion of his hair, it's not his entire hair that's glowing, it's just that portion of it. Same thing if you take a look at over his left shoulder, there's a little bit of a lightning effect right there and that glows perfectly. I mean, this is, this is killer, killer work. The longer I look at these characters and the more I examine them, the smarter your choices that you made become on these. If we take a look at Ryu, for example, how he has the blue suit, that means picking an orangey yellow for the swoosh color is gonna complement that very well. Same thing with Furukuma, how he has pinks and reds in his hair, then all of a sudden when you have a green swoosh, that's just gonna make this entire character and swoosh and background play very well together. I love some of the small little details like this tiny black splatter that you have featured throughout a lot of the upper and that's even directly on top of some of your characters. And if you think about it, when you do character work like this that probably takes, who knows, 8 to 12, 15, 20 hours per character, you're gonna be scared to start splattering paint right on top of it 
but it's just going to really help tie everything in together so much more where it no longer at all is going to look like you just slapped a character or a sticker directly on top of a background. This is without a shadow of a doubt one of the best Street Fighter themed shoes that I have ever seen in my entire life. This is the type of work that for sure belongs in a museum and there is not a single thing that I would do differently to these. Looking at the overall execution here, this is somebody who is not only a master at designing, but knows their way around an airbrush, knows how to hand paint complex details, knows how to add fun little extras, knows how to do complex dye jobs, and it's just, this is, this is watching a master at work right here, so absolutely tremendous job by you, man. Now, if you enjoyed seeing all of these fantastic artists that we featured today, but you want to see an entire episode dedicated to our video game contest that we held a while back, make sure you go ahead and check out this video next. All right, guys, everybody get out there and just create.